वेलकम एवरी वन वेलकम टू लेक्चर सिक्स सो लेट एस कंटिन्यू अवर डिस्कशन ऑफ सिमिट्री एलिमेंट्स एंड सिमिट्री ऑपरेशन इन दिस सेट वी हैव लास्ट सिमिट्री एलिमेंट एंड सिमिट्री ऑपरेशन विच इज कॉल्ड एज इम प्रॉपर एक्सेस एंड करस्पॉन्डिंग ऑपरेशन इज कॉल्ड एज इम प्रॉपर रोटेशन इम प्रॉपर या रोटेशन सो दिस पर्टिकुलर सिमिट्री एलिमेंट एंड सिमिट्री ऑपरेशन इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू सिमिट्री एलिमेंट्स एंड ऑपरेशन करस्पॉन्डिंग दिस थिंग सो फर्स्ट इज प्रॉपर रोटेशन थ्रू proper axis we have already seen what proper axis is and the second part is a uh, reflection perpendicular uh, to proper axis so reflection by a plane which is perpendicular to proper axis of rotation this also we know that uh, this is called as cn this is called as sigma and improper axis or improper rotation is uh, donated by sn okay so we have sn now this sn is a combination as i said it's a combination of cn and sigma and it does not really matter in which order you apply individual operations here so you can apply cn first so in this case this will be the first operation and this will be the second operation or you can apply sigma as first operation and cn as second operation okay so let us see uh, with an example how this particular improper axis can be understood so let us uh, look at an example of staggered ethane staggered ethane how do you draw this molecule so we have c c h h h right you must have seen this drawing earlier but in symmetry class you will never draw a molecule like this okay because it does not tell you where the orientation of each hydrogen is so uh, what is the next best thing which you can do is uh, is to draw it in which also does not give you very great details but it is still better so this one would be actually the eclipsed ethane so if you want to draw the staggered one you can draw like this h h h and then right so this will be the staggered ethane but to carry out any sort of symmetry operation in this will be really difficult so the easiest way is uh, you must have learned this newman projections uh, so how do you draw so this is one set of protons this is the other set of protons right so you have h now let me also write down the numbers 1 2 3 and 4 five six 
okay so now let's see how we do uh, this operation so as i said we can do c6 first so uh, okay so what kind of sn we are looking for here okay so we are looking for s6 in this case why s6 because this will be 2 pi by 6 operation what is 2 pi by 6 uh, what will be the angle so this will be 360 by 6 which will be 60 degrees of rotation so where is the 60 degree angle over here so let's see this particular angle this whole angle is 120 degree between two hydrogens on one carbon but if you look at this dihedral angle over here this dihedral angle is 60 degree so we'll be doing this rotation 60 degree rotation so we can also see if we if there is any s3 x is present or not but let's go ahead with uh, s6 and see this example okay all right so let's do uh, so s6 should be materialized by either doing c6 first or sigma first or in vice versa because both these operators commute with each other we know what the meaning of commutation is right we have seen this in the first class so these two operators commute we can test it out but let's first do it uh, okay let's first do the c6 one so we are doing this one first so c6 that is this one first right okay let's do both actually will be easier so in this case this is the first one so we are doing both ways okay so now if you do c6 operation first this uh, c6 operation means that h1 will move to this part h3 will move to this part h2 will move by 60 degrees right every proton will move by 60 degrees so how does it look so that means instead of a uh, inverted y we have a upright y right and then instead of upright y at the back we have inverted y at the back now so now let us also write down the numbers so this 60 degree anti-clockwise rotation means h1 comes here this will be 2 this will be 3 now h4 comes this side so this will be your 4 then 5 goes there so we have 5 over here so we have to be very careful when we are writing these numbers because otherwise it will mess up everything 6 right so this looks like right now you can see that if we denote this as molecule number one and this one as molecular number two so one and two are not in equivalent configurations right you can see that uh, the configuration of this is not equivalent to this so we can say that c6 does not exist in this one so c6 does not exist so we can do the operation but it may or may not result in equivalent configuration if it results in equivalent configuration we say that it does exist uh, the corresponding symmetry element does exist but in this particular case c6 does not exist right now let's do sigma okay so where is the so sigma has to be now perpendicular to this c6 axis so where is our c6 axis c6 axis is actually passing through uh, the two carbons okay so i'm drawing it perpendicular to the plane of the board so i'm drawing it like a circle with a uh, dot inside so this is my c6 axis so the plane this particular plane now has to be perpendicular to the c6 axis which means that the sigma is the plane of the board so that means whatever is in the forward will go in the backward and whatever is in the backward will come forward right so 
that means this h1 h2 h3 will go to the back upon this uh, reflection and h4 5 6 will come forward so that would mean that you have draw it like this so this will become your okay let's write the hydrogen first and then we will write the numbers in red so h1 2 3 and then this is 5 4 6 right so now you can see let's say if this is our third so first and third are equivalent because you can see that this is inverted by this is inverted y over here and then uh, this is the upright y at the back upright y at the back so you can clearly see that the first and third orientations or configurations are equivalent so we can safely say that s6 exists right so s6 which is a multiple of a product of two symmetry operations the first is c6 and the second is sigma so we have seen that it does exist now let us also look at the commutation part whether uh, it does it really matter with if we are doing c6 first followed by sigma or we can do sigma first followed by c6 okay let's do sigma first now so if we do sigma first now again uh, this inverted y goes back so the front carbon goes to the back and the back carbon comes to the front so that means it will be something like this and the this is the back carbon which is now in the front hydrogen hydrogen write down all of these hydrogens explicitly and then the numberings remain one two three did I mess up the numbering one yeah 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 one this should be two actually right and this should be three so accordingly this should be two this should be three okay and then the four five six four five six yeah this is correct okay so one two three so that's why i said the numbering has to be right and this this is my four five and six okay so now again you can see that let's say uh, this is our fourth configuration so first and fourth are not equivalent so we can say that sigma does not exist okay now if we do c6 on this c6 means again it is a rotation by 60 degrees anti-clockwise okay so that would mean now what will be the numbering so one comes over here and then two comes over here three comes over here and this will be four this will be five this will be six and now if we call it as fifth you can easily see that the first third and fifth are equivalent so because first and fifth are equivalent we can say that s6 exists so this is verified again and because third and fifth are equivalent we can say that c6 sigma or sigma c6 both are equivalent so that means the two operators are commuting right so okay so we have now verified that s6 is present in this particular molecule but we have seen that c6 or sigma may not it does not exist independently in this case right there is no independent sigma uh, independently or c6 right okay so now let us look at uh, how many operations 
number of operations generated by S n. So in general, okay. So let's take the general example uh, before we actually look at the operations. So if we do S n, so S n will be C n sigma, right? Uh, if we do S n to the power n, it will be S C n to the power n sigma to the power n, which is nothing but C n n. We have seen that C n n is e and sigma to the power n is e. Only in the case of n is e1, right? Okay, so let us first consider the case of n e1 n. So this will be equal to e, right? This is easier to follow. Uh, if it is not e1, then it will lead to sigma, right? Cn uh, to the n will remain e irrespective of even or odd, but sigma n will give rise to uh, sigma if n is odd. Okay. So now let's say s n to the power n plus one. What happens there? So that would be s n to the power n s n. That means since this was e. So this was E, so we can say this is Sn. Similarly, if we have Sn to the power n plus 2, power means how many times a particular operation is done. This can be written as Sn, Sn2. So you can say, so now there is a trend, right? You can see that if if you are uh, increasing this power one by one so you are getting the same operations back so that means after s n to the power n it starts to repeat so that means that it does not generate more than n operations so for we can safely say then for e1 n s n generates n operations we will see for odd case also but let's uh, this is for even n okay n operations okay so now let us uh, see the case of s6 so we had s6 equal to c6 into sigma right so this is s6 to the power 1 so this is an independent operation uh, now let's say s6 to the power 2 this can be written as c6 to the power 2 sigma to the power 2 right now this can be written as c3 c6 done twice is nothing but c3 sigma done twice is nothing but e so you have c3 right so this operation is different from this operation now s6 to the power 3 this will be equal to c6 to the power 3 sigma to the power 3 that means now this is uh, c6 done three times is nothing but actually c2 and sigma done thrice will be sigma so this is again a independent operation now s6 to the power 4 will be c6 to the power 4 sigma to the power 4 which is c3 square e so this is c3 square so c3 done twice is s6 done four times okay s6 to the power 5 will be equal to c6 to the power 5 sigma to the power 5 which will be c6 to the power 5 sigma right so again this has not come so far so it's a non-redundant operation 
s6 to the power 6 is nothing but c6 to the power 6 sigma to the power 6 and both are equal to e so again this is also a non-redundant operation okay so this is a case for uh, even n when n is even how many operations it will generate so now we have seen that uh, for even n we can also say that uh, if cn and sigma exist independently sn must exist right this we have seen from this one over here so if you have uh, c6 and sigma present independently the s6 will present because it's a product of the two if cn and sigma does not exist sn may or may not exist so we have to actually do it and test there is no rule which says that it must exist or must not exist if cn and sigma does not exist we have seen this example in this particular case c6 or sigma neither of those two were present but still s6 was present right so we can safely say that if they do not exist sn may or may not exist so you you actually have to test it out whether it is present or not by actually doing the operations but if they exist independently you can safely say that it must sn must exist okay so one more interesting thing if you notice over here that when s6 was present uh, three operations were present so if you notice over here there is c3 there is c3 square there is e right so when s6 is present a set of operations c3 c3 square e are present why am i interested in this because c3 c3 square and e can also be written as c3 cube right so this is equivalent to e so these three operation indicate that implies that c3 exists independently right so when s6 was present c3 was present independently irrespective uh, of c6 and sigma so that means we can generalize this for even n if s n is present c n by 2 must be present okay so we will see these kind of uh, corollaries a lot so this is an important one so you should know if s n is present c n by 2 must be present vice versa may not be true huh? so if c3 is present it is not necessary that uh, s6 will always be present but uh, vice versa may not be true okay now let us look at the case for odd n so for odd n what happens so let us do the same exercise that we did for uh, s n but in this case now we have s n e1 
So if we have S n, what do we have? C n sigma, right? S n one. Now it's easier actually if we take an example. So let's take. Uh, let us take n equal to 5. We, we can also take 3, but let's take 5 just to make it more clear. So let's move to next page and see. So S5 is equal to C5 sigma. S5 done twice is equal to C5 done twice sigma done twice which is nothing but c5 done twice because sigma square is e now s5 done thrice is equal to c5 thrice and now i'm shortcutting it to sigma sigma done thrice is equal to sigma s5 done four times is equal to c5 done four times now sigma to the power 4 is equal to e so i'm not counting that right s5 to the power 5 is c5 to the power 5 and sigma to the power 5 which is this will be e and this will remain as sigma right so we are generating all of these operations are uh, non redundant operations so far. So we have reached uh, S5 to the power 5. So that means now if we should uh, see whether we start to get uh, this operation back or we are getting some different operation. So what I mean is in case of Sn plus 1 when we tested here, here, so we were getting Sn back right s n plus one so in case of n plus two we were getting s n two back so let's see what happens here so s five to the power six do we get s n back or not so this will be c five to the power six sigma to the power six which is c five done once and six so this is not equal to this is not equal to s five so that means we need to keep going and because we are still getting non redundant operations. So let's keep on going. Unless we actually get the same operations back. So when the redundancy starts, we need to stop. Unless we get non redundant operations, so we need to keep on going. Now C5 to the power 7, sigma to the power 7. So this means C5 done twice and sigma right so again this is a non-redundant operation because this earlier was c5 square now we have c5 square and sigma now s5 done eight times is c5 done three times and that's all right so now again this is a non-redundant operation now let's to continue s5 to the power 9 so we have c5 4 and sigma so i'm shortcutting this you can uh, explicitly do it and see so what you have to make sure is that whenever you are hitting this is equal to e whenever you are hitting sigma square or even powers this is equal to e so i'm using this okay, to simplify this okay now s5 to the power 10 we are getting c5 to the power 10 that means n sigma to the power 10 that means again e right so again we have got a non redundant operation so let's see what happens next 11 c5 5 c5 5 c5 1 sigma 11 right so this is e e now we have c5 and sigma now if you notice that this is a redundant operation 
right c5 sigma c5 sigma so now if you go uh, with s5 12 you will notice that this will be equal to s5 2 so you can do this yourself so you will get this thing back over here okay okay so that means uh, for odd n sn generates two n operations right instead of n operations so we are getting two n non-redundant operations 2n plus 1 was same as uh, s1, 2n plus 2 is same as uh, n equal to 2 and so on, okay. Alright, so this is uh, simple and one more point here is that uh, sn uh, for Sn to exist, Cn and Sigma must exist independently. So this is for odd n. Okay. So for odd n, Sn to exist, Cn and Sigma must exist independently. Okay. So that finishes the discussion on symmetry elements and symmetry operations. And uh, we will take one more class to actually see uh, how to locate all these symmetry operations and uh, uh, symmetry elements and then find out corresponding symmetry operations. And then we will move uh, to next topic, which is product of symmetry operations. So that's all for today. Next class, we will look at how to implement these symmetry elements in different molecules and find out non-redundant operations. Okay.